Welcome back to Tenor with a Tea. Tonight I am literally having a tea and chat with you for the first time since episode one, so please grab a tea, a nice comfy chair, and join me. Today is the 13th episode. <gasps> As you know, 13 is not a lucky number, it's a curse number. And tonight I'm going to talk about the biggest curse in opera, and that's COVID 19. A lot of singers lost contract and performances and a great deal of income, and this affected freelancers in particular. But first, I'm going to talk about my situation. So the restrictions came into effect on Friday the 13th of March. Friday the 13th again, that cursed number. Um, Literally the day before the premiere of A Streetcar Named Desire. So the day before we just had a general rehearsal, which meant that we've done six weeks of rehearsal, six days a week, plus all the musical rehearsals before that. The orchestra had been rehearsed and done all the rehearsals. Costumes had been made, sets had been built. um, Photos had been taken, all the publicity had been done, and the premiere was literally the next day. And the restrictions came into effect and all of a sudden that production was gone. It was cancelled, no performances, and it never ever got performed. It just disappeared. And it will never ever be coming back. In total, I lost 32 performances. Six performances of A Streetcar Named Desire, including the premiere. Three performances of the musical The Count of Monte Cristo. Five performances of De Battle Student. And the final performance of La Cenerentola. And then, of course, there were performances from productions which hadn't yet been um, rehearsed. First were two gala concerts. The first was the Operetta and Gala in March, two weeks after lockdown. For that one, I had already prepared five arias. The second was a choir gala. Seven performances of Werther, which was going to premiere in April. And as you can see from my previous YouTube episode, I had already prepared the role for rehearsals. And then five performances of Der Schimmelreiter, that was going to premiere in May. To be honest, I wasn't far enough into study to even know what that opera was about. Then some freelance concerts. The Johann Sebastian Bach cantata, Er Schallet, Ihr Lieder, that was supposed to be performed at the end of May, also prepared and once again features in one of my YouTube videos. And finally, a concert in July that was organised during heavy restrictions. But honestly, I didn't expect that one to happen. So when I was starting this YouTube channel, the videos were centered around the performances that were coming up. So if you look closely, you can hear some music from the Operetta Gala. There's an episode about Werther, and there's also some music from the Bach Cantata that was supposed to happen at the end of May. March was horrible timing for me because my contract was due to expire at the end of July, which then I was going to be a freelancer, uh, which, is a nice, which is a nice euphemism. And I just began to start auditioning again, and I had two auditions cancelled, as well as the concerts and the performances. So coming to September, when things are starting to open up again in Germany, I asked myself, what's the current state of opera? So during these restrictions, I've been seeing lots of posts online from other performers, as well as petitions, which I've signed, but I was not really sure at the time what was going on. Um, So now that we've come to September, I want to look back and see what happened, and also the state of opera right now, and what kind of chance I have getting a job going forward. So I've done this by searching theatre websites, newspaper articles, and also asking a few of my colleagues on their experiences. Most opera houses closed for the rest of the season, starting from March 13th, but at the time we didn't know that was going to happen. For us working in a fest contract, which means that we are working exclusively for one opera company full-time, we lost our performances for the first month, um, but we didn't lose any pay, so it was, at least we were financially secure and we were told that uh, rehearsals would start again on the 18th of April. For freelancers there was a lot more uncertainty because they'd lost their performance fees and they didn't know when they were going to get paid. There was an announcement on the 20th of March from the stage union that an emergency fund had been set up. It was privately funded, uh, it was 50,000 euros, uh, but a week later the announcement had been completely exhausted, so a lot of freelancers obviously were in dire need at that point. So in our theatre the deadline of 18th of April came around uh, we hadn't started rehearsing, we'd been practicing and preparing for Werther, um, but the restrictions were still in place. So it was pushed back again to May 4th. And then of course, May 4th came around and nothing had changed in terms of restrictions. We weren't allowed to perform, so the rest of the season was cancelled at that point. And in most theatres, that had already happened. 
Once the theatre season was cancelled, the employees in our theatre were put on Kurzarbeit, which means basically reduced hours and reduced pay. Freelancers, on the other hand, were chasing their show fees and theatres were trying to figure out what they were obliged to pay. At the beginning, there didn't seem to be any agreement between theatres and performers. Um, some theatres were paying 100% of the missed performance fees. Um, other theatres were paying 50% and some theatres were paying less. Finally, on the 29th of April, there was an announcement by the Minister for Finance that performers in state-funded theatres should receive up to 60% of their performance fees. Of course, that only applied to fees under a thousand euros. Um, so if you're doing a lead role, you'll receive a significantly less than 60% of your performance fee, but I guess it was better than nothing. But some theatres, um, instead of paying their performers, opted to shift the performances to the following year. Of course, we still don't know if that's gonna happen. So in many cases, performers are still chasing up their fees. <laughs> Yes. Although it looks like the situation is getting worse in some countries, the good news is that in Europe, opera and live music is slowly but cautiously coming back to life. In August I managed to play my first performance since March in an outdoor cafe. I even sang some opera. In Germany are most theatres in Europe that are reopening. Seats are being sold with social distancing in place and limited capacity. As with every indoor venue in Germany, that means you have to keep 1.5 metres apart and wear a mask at all times. Houses have different requirements in terms of social distancing during rehearsals and performances, but generally the number of performers on stage are limited, so that affects the orchestra and choir significantly. Some regions have allowed larger gatherings of people than others, and if the article I read on the 9th of September is still correct, Berlin, Munich and Baden-Württemberg allow up to 500 people to enter the opera houses. So I wanted to find out more information on all the specific houses that I'm interested in either the bigger houses or houses that I've worked at before, so I decided to visit all the websites and check the current COVID situations for all these opera houses. So let's take a look. I'm going to read these all out. Bremerhaven, Augsburg, Wiesbaden, Berlin, Munich and Frankfurt have all reopened for the new season, with premieres in September and October. Some, like Staatsoper Unter den Linden and Staatstheater Bremerhaven, are advertising their seasons only one to two months in advance, while others already have their full programs online for bookings. Staatstheater Augsburg and Staatstheater Bremerhaven are doing smaller, reduced productions, but the bigger houses appear to be doing full-scale productions. Due to restrictions, houses are operating at 25% capacity in most cases. I was lucky enough to see the premiere of the first opera ensemble performance at Staatstheater Bremerhaven of the musical Chicago. It was directed with distancing between performers, but honestly, there were only a few times I was able to notice that. However, the orchestra were not playing in the pit, they were playing in a studio um, backstage, and the choir were also seen behind the scenes. Um, and I saw in photos on their Facebook page that they were also singing separated by shields. So apart from Germany, here's some information on other major houses. I'm going to start with Austria. The Salzburger Festspiele took place from the 1st to the 30th of August, and it was the first major festival uh, since the outbreak of um, COVID-19. It managed to stage two opera productions, three plays, and several concert series with reduced ticket sales. And that was 80,000 tickets sold out of 240,000, so that's still very significant. Um, apparently, there were no coronavirus infections as a result of this festival, which is pretty good news. The Wiener Staatsoper, Teatro alla Scala in Milan, Opernhaus Zurich, and Opera Nazionale de Paris are all open again. La Scala is the only question mark. There are only concert versions of La Traviata and Aida scheduled in October. However, a full production of La Boheme is scheduled to premiere on the 4th of November. After November, there's nothing listed, so we'll have to wait and see. Unfortunately, outside of Europe, things are looking a lot more grim, with many opera houses still closed. The Royal Opera House has this on their website. In light of the COVID-19 pandemic, we decided with a heavy heart to close the Royal Opera House to the public on 16th of March, 2020. Until then, we hope you can join our program of online events and live streams. So I looked on their website again recently, and it looks like they're mainly doing streams of old performances, but they do have one or two live streams. The Metropolitan Opera in New York is probably the opera house I've been reading the most about, and a lot of interesting things have been happening, so let's go through them. The Met was closed on the 12th of March, which is pretty much mirroring the European houses. It was supposed to be reopening on the 31st of September, but literally last week um, they announced the closure of their entire season up until 
September 27th, 2021. This kept a very public profile with an online Met Gala which took place on the 4th of May. A lot of singers watched that. It was very inspiring because no one was able to sing and perform and live performances were completely gone. Um, and some of the biggest stars were video conferencing. They had um, collaborations with different orchestras sitting in videos that were then mashed together into an orchestral performance as well as choir performances in the same vein. And so it was, it was pretty inspiring at the time. And the Met were also doing free daily opera streams during the pandemic and they're now up to week 28. Probably week 29 by the time this video has been made. However, behind the scenes, things have been really rough. Over a thousand employees, including the entire orchestra and chorus, have been without work and pay since March. Many are on welfare and have to leave the city of New York because they can't pay the rent anymore. So far, the financial losses to the Met are over $100 million. So, to my home country, Australia, the Australian Opera and the Sydney Opera House. Unfortunately, the national company Australia is doing very badly. Um, along with several major orchestras. And unfortunately, that situation appears to be getting worse every day. Opera Australia have stood down most of their staff since March, and performances have been cancelled to at least October 2021. Some sources state that Opera Australia are cutting up to 40% of its staff. Of course, that includes casuals. Most of the major newspapers have quoted up to 25% of permanent staff will face redundancies, which is still a big number, and they've also started to cut orchestra and choir members. Obviously there's not many performance opportunities going around but there is stuff happening so hopefully in the next few months I'll get some opportunities to perhaps audition and maybe do some performances. We'll see. Um, but in the meantime of course I'm going to be working hard on my YouTube channel and I also am recording a CD which is a very very complicated process and actually I'm very very happy to have this time to actually focus on that because it's going to take a couple of months of hard work. Um, I'll be doing more videos as I said and I'll probably be um, focusing my videos on my preparations. I'm going to be preparing arias for my auditions and I'm also going to be revisiting old roles and it's a good opportunity to then introduce these operas and these roles to you. So hopefully I'll have something fun as a result of these preparations. So that's my plan for the next few months and hopefully with a bit of luck good things will happen. Thank you very much again for watching this video. I know it's a lot more talking and a lot less music but I hope it was still entertaining and informative. If you enjoy this video, please hit the like button, and if you want to see more videos from me, hit the subscribe button. If I get more likes and subscriptions, I'm able to grow this channel and be able to do bigger and better things. Thank you very much again. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you next time. Seine Sprache ist dahin. Ich kann nichts tun, als dich beklagen, weil ich zu schwach zu helfen bin. Ich kann nichts tun, als dich beklagen, weil ich zu schwach zu helfen bin. Weil ich zu schwach zu helfen bin, weil ich zu schwach zu helfen bin.